I like it because I get to see when they first come in, first time come in. And then after a couple of days, they're out shopping, they're out walking, they're getting Uber uh, motorcycles. And I'm just like, what the heck? And then, yeah, I had one guy that's like, how is the city? Can I walk at night? Can I walk during the day? And I'm like, I drive all the time. I'm by myself all the time. I get my cars and I go. Yeah, but is, aren't you scared? I'm like, no, I have not felt threatened in any sort of way since I've been here. live here from Bitcoin Beach with Gladys from the Bitcoin landing spot. So tell us what exactly is the Bitcoin landing spot? The Bitcoin landing spot is for Bitcoiners to land and explore. So you can land from anywhere in the world and you can come to El Zonte. You can go to Punta Mango from there and you can go in the city. So we're basically about 40 minutes away from the airport. And from there you can go and explore. You can do tours. You can do and stay there. You know, we have a a lot of uh, Bitcoiners that come in, we've had we've had people that come in on a one way ticket and land there. So that's very exciting because they picked us to stay there and they and they love it. They love it. So just like the, the name suggests, it's a place for all these you know refugees and immigrants from around the world. They're looking to move to El Salvador. This is kind of mm -hmm. the first mm -hmm. place that they don't know anybody. They don't have any connections. Mm -hmm. They don't know where to stay. Uh, do you guys arrange transportation from the airport or how, mm -hmm. what kind of services do you guys provide? Well, we do have drivers that can go pick them up. We also can, we personally do not do the tours or the driving ourselves, but we do work with a lot of Salvadorians and support their businesses. So if they want to do tours, if they want to do um just to look around, like we can have people do property searches. So we already have a list of our properties. They can go do the properties. Sometimes I take them, but we also have a lot of people that we support and we like to support our, our, a lot of the Salvadorian companies that are here. So will they usually connect with you ahead of time and say, hey, this is what I need. I need somebody to pick me up from the airport. I want to tour the volcanoes or I want to look for real estate yes. or, okay. And, yes, and usually, you kind of give them some options. Yeah, usually we send them out to the bit driver. So he does a lot of the a lot of the scheduling for them so he can pick them up and take them wherever they want to go. And then they come back to us and they say, we're going to go back and sell everything and come back and, and live here. That has happened. So it's it's kind of like a hostel for specifically for Bitcoiners. You yes. have private rooms there, but also a place where a shared workspace where yes. they can if they're, you know, a lot of Bitcoiners are working online. Mm -hmm. So. Yes. A lot of them probably not on vacation, but more just working as they're here, I'm assuming. Yeah. And then they also can rent like the, the property itself where they want to have like a, a training because we have done a lot of trainings there. Uh, Bitcoin trainings. Um, and we had um, just reunions for Bitcoiners to come in and we have dinners. We're hosting a dinner actually this Saturday for a chef that his it's going to be his first big dinner okay. for. Yeah. For um, in the in the house. So they really like the, the, the space. The space is what everybody likes when they walk in. So will companies, are they bringing people in from outside of El Salvador or are you hosting workshops and stuff for Salvadoran employees or what? who would be somebody that would rent, rent the whole place? Um, the people that rent the place is like, for example, I'll, I'll give an example. Christian Blaze sent rented the place, the whole space, and then he did a, um, a big training for Bitcoiners. So those were a lot of the Salvadorian companies and small shops that are trying to expand their business and work their business and how to create and market to their 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 customers, okay. clients. Yeah. And the the people that are coming in, are you noticing specific countries in particular that U.S. the U.S. OK, U.S. and Canada. I was going to say, I'm shocked at the number of Canadians, you know, the, the population wise, the U.S. is, I think, like eight times the size or 10 times mm -hmm. the size of mm -hmm. Canada, maybe even more. But I feel like it's like a one to one Canadian to yeah. American that, that yeah. I see here in El Zante. So. Yeah, yeah. It's either mostly it's um, 
the clients that I've gotten has been the U.S. Okay, mostly. So, and maybe that's because you're you're from the U.S. Mm -hmm. now, and that's where your connections mm -hmm. are. So yeah, that makes but yeah, we sense. do have Canadians. We okay. definitely have Canadians. We have New Zealand. We have our Italian guy that came in. Um, one way ticket. One way ticket, and he's like, "This is where I'm at, and this is where it's, I'm Bitcoiner, 100. I live off of the Bitcoin standard." And he wasn't going back. I think he has his dog that he has to send to go get, but that's it. So it's really exciting. That seems to be the thing that trips people up the most is how to get their animals in. That's yeah. the really the most challenging thing. Yeah. And it's it's there's ways to do it, but it takes a little more time and planning. Yeah. Otherwise, a lot of times I just sell everything and yeah. show up here. Yeah. I like it because I get to see when they first come in, first time come in. And then after a couple of days, they're out shopping, they're out walking, they're getting Uber uh, motorcycles. And I'm just like, what the heck? And then, yeah, I had one guy that's like, how is the city? Can I walk at night? Can I walk during the day? And I'm like, I drive all the time. I'm by myself all the time. I get my cars and I go. Yeah, but is, aren't you scared? I'm like, no, I have not felt threatened in any sort of way since I've been here. So no. Do a lot of them kind of have that fear coming in? Yes. Like, uh, Oh, we've read all the news yes, and they're afraid we're going to get kidnapped yes, or we're going to yeah. all of it, <laughs> all of it. And then the transition from that first conversation to two days later is absolutely like 180. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love seeing that. That's what what's the That's the best part of a little Bitcoin landing spot because they come in one way. They come in in fear and they're just happy after. That's Have great. Have you seen that? initial fear lessen at all like as yes more news has gotten out about it's really not that dangerous yeah. here it's actually a very safe place is that perception yes. changing absolutely okay. especially in the last um in the last six months people are already decided so they're really not like coming to check it out more they're now decided that they need to do something they don't know what yet but they're decided that they want to do something and most people see you coming, are they planning on working here, starting businesses, or are they retired, or they've been in Bitcoin or since the early days, so they don't need to work, or what's the, what's the kind of mix that you see? So mostly it's to come and check out what they're going to buy, number one. But And to buy is something to live property. in, or is an investment? Yeah, or? they want to buy property to live in and then Airbnb out, okay. because some of them still have some kind of ties that they need to finish up in the U.S., but for now, they're like, okay, we'll just Airbnb while we do the final transition over. And then we have the other ones there. They just want to get a, a, a residency like right away. And they, I already know who to send them to. And um, that would be Jeremy <laughs> that we send them out to. Mm -hmm. And um, it's either they're, they're already, they already know what they want to do. They want to do something. The, the only difference is how soon. And if they're going to be a resident right away, that's basically what the two things are. They already come decided. And do most of them start pursuing that right away. The residency. Yes. OK. Yes. They're like, who do we talk to? How do I do this? And um, we send everybody out and they're already looking. We have people that come in and go back and start selling all their stuff. You know, some, a couple from Texas came in. They were here for about four or five days. They went back. And within a month, they already had sold a property and they had their business sold. Wife and a husband, they both had, they're cleared out. They're like liquidating everything. And I'm just like, that's, a, to me, it's amazing because they, the, it's like when you become, when you get orange pilled, you know, it's something that clicks and their attitude changes. They yeah. come in kind of afraid and then they leave and they're like, we can't miss this opportunity to buy something here. So. Tell me your story, your orange pill story and, and mm -hmm. your El Salvador story. Why mm -hmm. did you choose to, to come here and open up the Bitcoin landing spot? Mm -hmm. What kind of precipitated that and, mm -hmm. and how long have you been in the Bitcoin space and mm -hmm. how did those two things play together? OK, so Bitcoin space, I want to say I was a little bit late, not as late as others, but I was late 2013 and um, it was that, just I, that, that's very early. That's not late. Uh, I don't think by anybody's standards. So. <laughs> so I feel like I, you know, I just missed out for not executing on that yeah. on that way in the way that a lot of other people were. But um, so I just bought a little at a time. I don't know what I was doing. It was cheap enough to just buy. So it was no big deal. I'm in investment. So it's just like it's just another investment. You, you can buy a property and it just drops and there's there's your your equity. Right. 
So I just saw it as an investment, you know, just buy a little bit every week, just buy a little bit every week. And, and that's how it has been. Um, the Salvadorian part is my, my dad is Salvadorian. My mom is Guatemalan. Um, I was born in Guatemala when all the back in what I was born in 75. So I just dated myself, <laughs> but, um, it is what it is. So all the craziness and civil wars and all this stuff that was going on in within the countries, um, she left and I stayed with my grandma for a while. And then I ended up in the U.S. at about four years old. Were they in San Salvador area? Or? They were in Guatemala by then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then she left from there. Um, and Guatemala had its own civil the, yeah. war during that time yeah. also. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So my dad um, was going to was gonna go meet her there. So then uh, she, she moved out there. He was going to move in after. And then I was going to get, you know, invited over. So he moved out there and um then they asked me to to move out but like he he died when i was still young oh. so i didn't get to really meet him or spend too much time with him but i always knew okay well one day i'll go back but then everybody always scared me like news oh you're gonna get you're gonna get raped you're a woman you're gonna it's it was just a done deal right so even in guatemala i never went to guatemala because of that and finally when um the president said, you know what, this is going to, you know, he, he made that big announcement. And I said, this is the time, this is the time we are Bitcoiners. My real estate, um, portfolio can grow there. I don't know what I'm going to buy. I'll just look and see what, what's available. I don't know anything about the country because it was just out of the radar. You know, when Bitcoin was announced, I'm like, whoa, okay, let's go over there. Um, and it was through the pandemic that, I realized that the other countries that we are we are investors in were reacting a whole lot different than we would like. So we pulled out of some of them and I said, you know what, we can't go there. Um, now that we see how they react to big, serious issues. Right. And the president has been um, really good. He doesn't get punked around, which I really like. He's putting the country first as anybody should do any ceo anything like that you have to put the company first and in this case he was putting the 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 citizens first so i really really liked about that about him and that's what brought me here were you following any of that prior to the announcement about bitcoin or was it that bitcoin announcement that put el salvador it was on the your big, radar to me personally myself it was the bitcoin yeah. announcement i think that's what really catapulted the, the president yeah. onto the, you know, the world stage, yeah. you know, he was doing a lot of positive things before that, but nobody right. really knew about it. But right. once he made this, you know, yeah. brash decision to, mm -hmm. to adopt Bitcoin, everybody kind of woke up to like, Wait, it, what's he, going on yeah. there? He might as well have put like a Batman sign with the Bitcoin thing because yeah. everybody was coming <laughs> because that's how it was. And we're like, OK, well, let's go there. So I decided to come out here. It was a, only a three day trip because I guess again, I didn't know anybody. I just knew one agent and I said, all right, well, whatever, let's just go. I've been in other countries. It's not a big deal. People, oh, there's gangs. It doesn't matter. I was raised in Compton and Linwood in California. I mean, how worse can it get? I've seen people die. I've been seen people shot. Um, so I'm like, all right, I can manage. Right. Um, so then I came in two days in, I put in an offer on a property. It got accepted on the way back to the airport. So I had to come back. So I had to come back and then to close the deal. So I, I, I bought an El Zonte and I'm so happy that I did because now I, I have my flag, my first flag. Yeah. No, and I, I think you uh, had good timing there too because mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, you know, obviously the prices here have skyrocketed yeah. with, uh, you know, the adoption of Bitcoin and, the, and people just being exposed to the beauty of El Zonte. It has yeah. so much to offer. Yeah. So uh, but then I the Bitcoiners got in be, at the right time. Yeah, but Bitcoiners want to be with other Bitcoiners. Yeah. In the U.S., you talk about Bitcoin and look at you like you got a disease, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, you've been brainwashed. I'm like, no, no. And now with everything that's going on now, they're looking to El Salvador too. But yeah. So so when Bitcoiners are coming in, what are the areas of the country that they're looking to, to buy or to rent in? What are you seeing? Are they wanting to be in the capital city? Are mm -hmm. they wanting to be in El Zante? Are they yeah. wanting to be in the countryside or the coffee country? Or yeah. what's 
what are you seeing? So when I first take the phone call and they're going to, they have all the questions, right? And they're always the same questions. Where should I buy? Uh, what do prices look like? And I say, all right, the first thing I'm going to ask you, are you a Bitcoiner? Because sometimes other, they're just looking around and they're not necessarily Bitcoiners. They have a little bit, but they're not full on. So I ask them, how's your lifestyle? Number one, where do you live now? How do you live? And is that how you want to stay? And then we decide, okay, so if you're a real Bitcoiner, you you want to be around the community. And my community is going to be El Zonte. It's going to be all the other neighboring cities that are in beach in, B B in Bitcoin City. I mean, I'm sorry, Bit Bitcoin Beach. And um, if not, if you want to be in the city, then there's other Bitcoin communities that are there. So we try and look around there. Um, some of them think that it got expensive, but I always tell them, you know what? It's it's not as expensive expensive as it's going to get. So if you really want to be there, you have to buy now. And um, we have a lot of, uh, there's still a lot of properties that are affordable. They're not too expensive out of, out of their reach. But I think uh, if you want to buy here, it's going to be a whole lot cheaper than in the U.S., number one. And number two, you're basically free here. You're like, freedom is here. Yeah. So you're basically, um, your choice, to me, I would buy it. If, uh, if I had to choose to where to buy again, I'd buy here again. Even in if Elizante. it's more expensive. Yeah. Yes. And, well, and you see that in the U.S. A lot of times you buy an expensive area, but it just keeps getting more and more Correct. expensive. And so. Yeah, I would buy again. I think it's um, just from an investment perspective. A lot of times it is best to buy in the, the nicest area. Yeah. Because that's going to. And I think especially with Bitcoin, mm -hmm. you're going to see more and more yeah. people coalescing on this, yeah. this area. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you tell people when people are asking about prices because they kind of mm -hmm. are all over the board so they how are. how would you describe prices or, or set people's expectations so as these prices go i always tell them that it's going to depend on the seller what's the urgency of the seller did they just inherit the property um are they flipping did they fix and flip what did, what did they do so we always talk about the seller and i always ask any other agent or even my own sellers what do you want to do what would be the least that you can take will you do seller financing what would you do? Like, it's like interviewing the seller also, not just the buyer. Yeah. So, um, and do you see, do people do flips here? I, I'm not really aware of that being a thing. But. There's a, a, there's a small community that will do it. Okay. I know uh, three people that will do that. They'll and is that mostly on the coast or is that in the capital beach city? Beach areas, or? beach areas, okay. more, they're like 70% beach areas. And are most the people that you're seeing coming in, are they wanting to be on the beach? Um, oh yeah, they love those. Okay. They love. Yeah. They love it here. I love it here. And how how do you help people think through whether to be in El Zante or one of the surrounding communities? Because you know it's you do pay a lot of times. You can pay double to be in El Zante than what mm -hmm. you could pay in a place that's fifteen minutes away, still on the beach. So how do you help people think through? Mm -hmm that or, or I don't know, maybe you disagree. Maybe you think the price differential is different. I don't know what your perspective is. OK, so since you're more in the market than I am. Right. So what I ask them, it goes back to their lifestyle. How is your lifestyle? Are you a partier? Do you like to, what do you like to do? Because that's at the end of the day, where do, where do you want to call home? Somewhere where it's quiet or do you always want to be like, for example, living in New York, you want to be in the middle of everything or do you want to be out? So it's going to go back to the lifestyle. So obviously living in the middle of everything is going to be more. It's yeah. just a demand. Yeah. Although I would still say El Sante is not, I wouldn't say it's like a wild party place by any no. means. I think it's pretty I think the family Tunco friendly. Is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't want to live in El Tunco. Yeah, no. But El Sante is. That's for the is, younger people. Yeah. Much more of a family friendly place. And yeah. So. so that's why I asked them where, what type of lifestyle do you want? Or do you, do you have kids? You know, if they're if they're older, they don't want. Of course, they're not going to be in El Tunco. Yeah. So we have banned out into San Diego. So there's a lot of other. And San Diego, you can get. Oh yeah. I mean, maybe a third the price sometimes yeah. of what it would be in El Zante. Yeah, and it's just on the other so, side. It used to be kind of a dangerous area, but it's it's cleaned up significantly. And so yeah. I think those are the type of areas where you can find a lot of deals. Through. Yeah. There's people that have told me. And asked me why am I selling in San Diego? And as a matter of fact, there was a we were in, on a YouTube channel, and they're like, "You San Diego is so dangerous. Why are you sending people there?" I'm like, "I've been there. When was the last time you were there?" I'm here. When was the last time you were here? Because everybody has an opinion about everything, right? Yeah. But not until you're actually working the areas and you're talking to people and you're looking at the actual uh, retail stores that are open. 
that's how you know when it's safe. I'm a mom. I have kids. I, I don't want to put a mom or a family somewhere where it's going to be dangerous. And San Diego is not dangerous. Yeah. And that and even in the last year, that's been a huge transformation yeah. in that area. Yeah. Um, because even a couple of years ago, it was, you know, obviously there were certain areas you could go through during the day and stuff, but it wouldn't have been an area that I would have yeah. you know, suggested people to buy. But now I think it's probably one of the better values out there. Oh, yeah. So there's a lot of uh, properties that have big lots. Yeah. And they have the small homes. They have the uh, groundskeeper's homes. So you get two. If you want to keep the groundskeeper, it's fine. But the lots are a whole lot bigger. You could get manzanas there for 125, 150. Yeah. No, it's it's a it's a huge differential. Yeah. So are you seeing people kind of do they usually have in their idea? No, I want to be in El Zante or or does, does their budget usually dictate where they're mm -hmm. buying or how does that? Yeah, they want to be in El Zante. Okay. They, all, they all want to come here just like everybody wants to go to L.A. Right. And then they get here and they're like, mm, maybe I want a cheaper area or maybe I want more land, you know, and then that's when they start adjusting. So we go as they're adjusting to the properties and looking at what's available, then they make up their mind on where they're going to end up. And once they're here, do some of them decide they don't want to be at the beach? They want to be in the mountains? They want to be in the city? Or they usually stick to their stick guns? Stick to the beach. Um, I want to say that a beach person that is already decided they want to be in the beach, they're going to stay in the beach. It's just going to be where in the beach. Yeah. So that's why we're scooting that way and we're scooting this way. We're scooting different ways just out more because they get more more um, land. So what would be, just for viewers, what would be areas that you would suggest people look in? What would what would be the, mm -hmm. the Bitcoin friendly or the, Bitcoin friendly, the yeah. up and coming places you think on the coast um, for them to, to look? So around here, I would say San Blas, Bitcoin, El Zonte, of course. We have um, properties over in Taquillo, further down. Uh -huh. Uh, close to Misata, we have a couple of properties there. So it's just, it's not too far out. Now we have about seven listings out in Punta Mango. So we have properties over there that is going to turn into a place like this, yeah. you know, so they have the opportunity to get into something there. I had the, the first, I was the first foreigner with a house out in Punta Mango. So it was, uh, it's changed quite a bit since, yeah. uh, since then. So the streets are being built. I have videos of the, you know, the pictures of the streets being built and all framed out to pour and, and the little bridges. It's really nice to be there when it's happening because first of all, it's just wide open and there's so much beachfront property there. Yeah. I've been to your place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Huh? It's it was beautiful, like huh? Weeks. It's amazing. I'm like, what the heck? This is like, I, I didn't even have words. I s walked out to the platform, looked out. And I'm like, wow, this is just amazing. Yeah, I love it down there. It's it's a little remote. Um, you know, if, if we didn't have kids and, and if it was just my wife and I, maybe mm -hmm. we'd choose to live there. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, have kids in school and that it's it's too far out there. But yeah. it's, but I love to, to spend time. It's down amazing. There. I'm yeah. like, this is like the one I, I, I have no words for the spot you have. I think it's the I mean, I think that area in general is the most beautiful part of, of El Salvador. And yeah. of course, I'm biased, but I think our, our place is the best one in yeah. that area. It's, yeah, but the uh, beach is amazing. Um, and then you have uh, El Cuco there. So you yeah. just go out there and if you want to eat and just be out. But all the properties that are there are so affordable. It's just insane. So I was... Um, I have a couple of clients that are going to go out there this Saturday and look at some of the okay. listings that we have. Yeah. Have you seen the the new community center that we put out there? I passed by it, but no, I didn't go okay. in. You got to go check it out. Citadel of Hope. It's uh, oh, we that's have a soccer field there. And then oh, uh, it's already built out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's all it's all done. Right. Uh, right behind the school there. Uh -huh. So they just tore the school down. They're redoing the school. Mm -hmm. I think they did that because after we built the the center, the school looked pretty shabby. So they're, oh, they're, like, oh, we they're stepping up. Yeah. Well, um, that's good. Yeah. But it's a, we're seeing, you know, the people in that area are so excited. The English classes are, mm -hmm. are full. Um, that was actually where we started the Bitcoin Beach project initially was in Punta Mango. Okay. Um, with COVID and everything, we kind of shifted focus because just because of the distance, but mm -hmm. that that has that legacy there. And, you mm -hmm. know, most of the people in that area have used Bitcoin at one time or another or, or continue to use it. Yeah. So. It was a drive to get out there. We went over and back the same day. So we were beat when we got back. But it's so pretty and I really like how the president and everything is getting built out perfectly. Yeah. 
and it's well planned out. So I uh, have clients for that area too. What about like the the higher elevation areas? Do you mm -hmm. see any Bitcoiners moving to a Wachupan or Waiua or mm -hmm. any of those, El Pinal, any of those areas? Or is that still not really on people's radar? We have listings out there, but they all want to be near El Zonte. Yeah. This is like the magnet. And they may like scoot out to the other areas, but they still come here. This is like the Mecca of what they want to see and this is a place where they want to be and when it comes down to financing and um the actual purchase they want to live somewhere where it's quiet or and but they still come back here this is where they want to be so that's why i feel happy that i bought something here it's done paid for yes, yes. <laughs> yeah you're in you yes flag yes yes so you were doing real estate in in california prior to this this is your background this is okay mm -hmm. so this is this is not something new to you no. to be dipping your toe into the real estate market. No. This is this is what you've been doing yeah. for the last decades. Yeah. Um, so did that come to you immediately? Like, hey, I need to switch and start focusing on El Salvador? Or how did you decide well, to start yeah. doing real estate here? So when I bought my first property, I was asking, how do people finance stuff? How does that even work? And um, I saw some properties that were in the 200 range, 300 range. And uh, people were like, you can't get financing here. You have to have a list of things, right? And that was where I said, all right, challenge accepted. Challenge, I, this is my life. I've been doing real estate since I've been an adult, really. Like after I turned 19, that's, that's, that's all I've done. Well, you already told them how old you were earlier I know. in the show, so. Oh my God, <laughs> I don't look it. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I um, I did real estate when I was uh, when I was 19 because I had a, I was a teen mom, so that was like the way to me to have the flexibility. And I w I looked a whole lot younger at night. It looked like I was 16 when I was 19, so it was a rough start because nobody wanted to. And you know, people are like in their 30s and 40s of trying to buy a property, so I had to learn a lot really quickly. But it was uh, really flexible for me to, as a teen mom. Um, well, 19 and um, it was uh, something that I just loved and loved working with people. And I did loans and I did real estate together. And it was really, to me, it was fun. I was just out. I was out all the time and showing properties and working with all the, the numbers. And that's what I've done really all my life. I had things where, you know how you get, you get kind of bored, like, okay, I want to do this now. I want to do that now. But it's always come back to real estate. I definitely want to dive into the the details on, on the mortgage part, but before that, let's talk through some of the other details of mm -hmm. what people can expect when they're trying to buy here, what's different mm -hmm. than the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing that's different is they don't have licensed real estate agents mm -hmm. here, correct? Mm -hmm. it's, yes. Anybody can kind of decide they want to be an agent. And yeah. It's, yeah. So you get a lot of real estate agents selling the same property because the... Um, Sellers don't feel like they are committed to anybody. So it's like whoever, it's basically an open listing is yeah. what we call it. It's open, it's an open listing, but you don't have any licensee uh, agents selling it. So it was really important for us to establish our company um, because I've been in the business, I've been in the business for a long time, but I haven't been in the country. So it took me a while just to figure out all the cities and what they worked and who worked in those cities too. And the agents that were prominent in those cities. So, um, I think that uh, they really have to work with somebody that's full time because they're going to know the ins and outs of the CNR, the CNR, where they all the registry of all the properties. They need to know what are the fees. We had a client that came to us. No, he was not a client. Unfortunately for him, he was not a client for us, but with us. But he was closing on a deal, and um, the attorney, or the agent, or the seller told him that he had to pay a transfer tax fee. So at time of closing, he paid all his closing costs and everything. And then he had a fat bill for a transfer fee of thousands of dollars that he was not expecting to buy. He was already tight on trying to close that deal. Oh, they hadn't told him that that no, fee was. No, he yeah, found out okay. at the time of closing that he, there was a transfer fee. Your taxes. And, and it's, I'm trying to remember, I think it's like a sliding scale between one to three percent. Three, yeah. Depending on like on they the exempt the first 28,000. 28, yeah. And, yeah, then and then the rest yeah. you pay on it. Yeah. So he didn't know that that was there. 
And then um, I had spoken to him about it, but he's like, I didn't even know. And I, this was something that I had to close and I had to come up with that money. And I didn't even know where I was going to get that money from. Yeah. And you you pay that after the fact. So yeah. you could actually have it sold, but then you can't even do the registration so if they you don't had, have that fee. Yeah. They had all this yeah. time to tell him and they didn't tell him they didn't, or they didn't know. I don't know what the situation I think sometimes was. they just assume everybody knows that. And so, you know. As an it's, agent, it's, it's your job. Yeah, yeah. But I think sometimes people, you know, if, they're not used to dealing with foreigners. They may mm -hmm. think that, oh, they know that that's the norm here because most Salvadorans know that that's how it works. So, but you're right. Those, those yeah. type of things is very important. Yeah. Um, the, there are some other particular things that are a little bit different here. One is there is, at least as far as I know, there's no title insurance, correct? There is no title insurance. Yeah. So it's very important for you to, we have a, we have another one that's, uh, we've had for about seven months. Because at the time of um, the contract, the agent said that all the documents were ready. Oh, we're ready to sell. We're ready. Everything's done. The seller already signed everything. All right. So let's put it in the contract. We put it in the contract. Turned out that when our attorney pulled the information on the on the uh, property, there was two other owners on the property. And I told the agent, this is your job. Yeah. Like this is, as a selling agent, your job is to get all the documentation is just to have it ready. As soon as the offer comes in, you have it. He had nothing. So um, I've actually worked the whole deal on both sides for this deal because the agent doesn't know what he's supposed to do. And I'm new to the here, the country. So I'm learning what they are and I'm kind yeah. of just comparing them to the US, right? But um, they didn't have that. And then on top of that- What was it? that they just needed the signatures from those other people or was one owner trying to sell without the partners? It was inheritance. Was it? Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. And then the the son didn't know what he had to do. And then um, the agent didn't know that the owner didn't know what the, he had to do. So there were the sisters and then, the, and then the the brother. Okay. And then the title, as far as the plat map, the plat map goes, it was showing... Um, the lot being a whole lot smaller when the appraisal went out there, it was 30% smaller than what the actual certification was. So we had that made that another three to four months longer. Cause now you have to have an attorney, you have to have a topographer come out. They have yeah. to come and me remeasure. So those are the things that as a listing agent, you have to have all those documents cause it's just going to make the deal longer. But that's one of the things that you have to look at. And it's going to cost about a thousand dollars for all that to get done. Yeah, I think for, for some people, the, the title insurance thing is they, they get a little concerned yeah. about that because it's just the norm in, in the U.S. You yeah. have to have it if you have right. a mortgage. to close, yeah. Um, and so you have somebody basically guaranteeing that the title is correct. Clear. So here mm -hmm. you definitely have to do your own due diligence correct. and make sure that mm -hmm. the title is clear. Because yeah. the other thing you'll see here a lot of times is people will just not pay their and the, when I say property taxes, property taxes here are very little, almost, and they're yeah, not minimal. technically even taxes a lot of times. They're more municipality fees, but a lot of people just won't pay them for 20 years. And then when they go to sell, you know, they have to clear all that up or yeah. you have to make sure they've cleared all that up. So it's yeah. little things like that. You kind of have to yes. make sure you're. Yeah. Again, for this specific property, the, the buyer is paying for the taxes. They're paying for the topographer. They're paying for the remedicion it's called so they're going to remeasure and recertify so the buyer is paying for all of that and the seller isn't paying for anything so it's going to get deducted of course yeah. from the net but um yeah they didn't know that they had to do all of that so we're educating we're educating both the buyer and the seller i think too here you have a lot of properties that were kind of abandoned yeah. for a long time and yeah passed down you know through inheritances and nobody mm -hmm. even really knows what, what you they have, have to do yeah you know, what they have to do and yeah. so Obviously, having somebody that knows what they're doing is, yeah. is very crucial. Yeah, um, yeah and th things change, too. So it's just even me. I Sometimes I'm like, okay, well, what's going on with that? Because, for instance, there was a, uh, a property right now that was $200,000, right? And I found out that the agent was making X amount from that $200,000, but the contract was made at $200,000. So as far as the, the bank knows, it was $200,000. So... What's happening is that now the buyer is going to be responsible for the t the additional commission. So I'm going to just give you the number. The agent's making $40,000. The actual 
purchase is 160. So as far as the buyer was con concerned, the purchase was two hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. So that means that the buyer was going to pay transfer tax fees for forty thousand dollars that had nothing to do with the actual sale. So I had to reconstruct that whole thing and tell the seller, look, you're not going to um, net the two hundred, right? He's like, no, it's only one sixty. And I'm like, okay, well then let's redraw the contract for one sixty. And then the buyer's still going to pay what he's going to pay, yeah. but at least he's not going to have to pay the transfer taxes for forty thousand dollars. And you that's know? and that's something that I, I understand what you're saying. Just the way that they set the contract up yeah. was going to cost some more money, but that's also something that kind of surprises some people. And yeah. I think you, you, I can't remember the phrase, the name for it. You said net net sale listing, or, net listing. Yeah. So and you, you will see that a lot here, where mm -hmm. they'll go to the you know, maybe somebody's not even looking to sell and they'll say, hey, if I can get $150,000 to you, mm -hmm. would you be willing to sell? And then they'll turn around and list it at 200,000. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the not, not saying that that's anything wrong with that, but, but it is, it's different than most, especially most Americans are expecting. And so yeah. I think it's important to ask whoever you're working with, okay, is this what's the buyer actually, or what's the seller actually getting out of this? Mm -hmm. Just so you understand the commissions, you know, I've seen some deals where the, the agent makes, you know, doubles the price of the property mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe they found a super great deal and maybe it was still a good deal for the buyer, but yeah. it's, it's important, I think, for people to be mm -hmm. upfront with that and them to know what they're getting into. Yeah. And then that's, that wasn't just that part. The part was also that the bank was going to finance those additional $40,000. So he was going to end up getting the financing for the, for the commission that yeah. he, he was already paid out. So we had to do reconstruction on that loan. Once I found out that the agent was um, making um, that money, which is not a problem. I mean, you're going to make what you're going to make. It doesn't matter to us. It's a good deal, right? To the seller, that's what they want. We just have to make sure that everything falls where it needs to fall and nobody's getting charged more than they need to be paying. Yeah. That's all it is, really. No, it's just you just want to make sure you understand yeah. where people's motivations are, yeah. you know, how they're being compensated. Yeah. Because otherwise you, you can get ripped off if they mm -hmm. if their, you know, motivations are lined up not in your best interest. It's just good to Yeah, to it's know. called fiduciary duty. Yeah. That's what you need to have. Which, That's what which your agent doesn't really exist here. So yeah, your fiduciary yeah. duty. I I I go through that part. Yeah, and I make sure and reanalyze, reanalyze, and if there's something that needs to get changed, I just tell it. It's just a matter of explanation. It all makes sense once it's explained. A lot of people will say no or will kind of like be defensive about it. That's because they don't understand what's happening or how it's being explained. But once we explain it. And like, oh, it's just that. Yeah, we're not taking from you or anything like that. It, this is just for everything to be out flat out and explained correctly. And nobody's paying. You're not paying more and they're not paying more. But you're still getting what you're going to get. Yeah, that's all it is, really. Just the well, communication. I, I think that's why it is important to, to work with somebody that you trust here, yeah. because and, yeah. and a lot of times they'll know like. Uh, that's too much for this area. Mm -hmm. And it's it's very hard if you're not familiar I mean, even even somebody who lives in, in mm -hmm. El Zante, a lot of times I'm kind of surprised at what the prices are on different mm -hmm. things. So it's, it's important to have somebody that's really in touch with what's going on in the market. Yeah, I've gotten into it with the seller because they, they were trying to rip off my buyer. And at the end of the day, they walked away with it away from that property. And they ended up buying their we're under contract on another property. But the seller was really trying to take ten thousand dollars from my buyer and making uh, changes at the last minute charging my buyer like $1,800 worth of attorney fees. We hadn't signed anything, but the attorney was already giving them a bill. Yeah. And I'm like, no, we're not doing this. And she was, she hung up, she hung up on me and didn't want me to be there. But I'm like, it's my responsibility to protect them. It's your agent's responsibility to protect you, you know, but I'm not going to let a whole mix of words confuse my American buyers from Texas. They're trusting me to make sure I have their back. And yeah. that's what I'm going to do 100%. No, and that's yeah. obviously the, the right way to do yeah. it. Yeah. The other thing, other than title insurance, that's a little different here is there's no mortgage companies or mortgage process. So I would love to hear <laughs> you explain how that the actual transfer of property goes and how you coordinate the movement of money 
at the same time because I've had mm -hmm. my own experiences, which which I'll dive into a little bit after. But I just curious is how do you explain to people that that are used to having this escrow period? Okay, so as far as the mortgages and what? No, that the escrow part of it, not the, the, not the mortgages. We'll, we'll, okay. I want to save that to so, last because I want to okay. have more time for I that. Wanted, I wanted to clarify, but okay. So what we do is when you work with us and you fly in, let's say my clients will fly in on a Tuesday. Uh -huh. By Monday evening, they already have a bank account. So we have their bank account done. They walk out with the ATM card the same day. Like they, we go with them. And they can, and then when they come in, they can be bringing money in if they, if they want, or they can wire to my office or to my company. And then I just do a transfer to their bank account. And will that bank allow them to, to then go ahead and practice? I've had horrible experiences with the banks here mm -hmm. in El Salvador. I mean, it, it took me 10 years to finally open an account. And then oh, after no. I did, I didn't want to use it because it was, they wanted all this documentation. Originally they said I couldn't move any money for six months mm -hmm. and it was all these different like hurdles that were put on top of it so is that not been your experience or it ha it was it took me about six months to now be able to show up to the bank with the taxes and a passport and open a bank account that's all i need you don't need a you don't need to have a res um an address here or a bill because that's one of the so they want their it. their u.s tax returns say yeah. say say it's an american yeah. client they want their u.s tax returns mm -hmm. and a passport and their passport that's all i can okay. open it. that's all i need okay and they will with that allow them to move a large amount of funds that into that account six months is still a thing so you can't really wire in and do a lot. So that's why I have my account. Okay. So then my, it goes into my account and then we just transfer over. Okay. I made it to where, where everything is flowing perfectly. Yeah. 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 So, so obviously the, the, your clients have to trust that they're wiring money to you and that's actually going to, to exactly. go to pay. And exactly. That, that's the way we bought our first place here. We mm -hmm. met, you know, somebody that was working in real estate and, and like I said, it's not, really regulated and right then we came we made an offer it was accepted mm -hmm. and we're like okay well how do we move the money down yeah. and she's like well you can send it to my account and then i can pay and i exactly. remember thinking like oh that's man. a lot of money and yeah. even when we showed up i was like where's my money is she gonna be in the bahamas or <laughs> is it and and it all went through it was yeah. all you know it was all above board and everything but it's it it felt like we were taking mm -hmm. a risk because yeah. you, they had that. Um, yeah, that's why I think it's important to have your company and it's registered because they always have somewhere to investigate, yeah. somewhere to see, hey, I send it to this company and they're registered. And that's why we made sure that the first thing we did, we went through the whole loops and everything to make sure we had we were legit where they can search us and they can in the in the government or however it is. And um, they can be okay, but yeah, I've had people just wire money to me, and it clears to, for me. It clears the next day. See, that's not been my experience at all. I feel like every time I try to wire money down here, I get gets flagged on the U.S. side. Mm -hmm. They want to know why I'm sending money mm -hmm. here. Then it gets held up here, mm -hmm. and I have they want like two years of tax return. But see, that took me. Like, it took me months to be able to do yeah. it this way. It took me months. I'm telling you, I sat from bank, da vivienda. I went to another bank different branch. I went to a different, different branch, different branch. And I sat there for hours, three hours, four hours, because they were looking and they were talking into, within each other. Like, what is she doing? And I was crazy trying to get it, people to get mortgages. Um, there's times that I was like there, I would fly in at the seven o'clock flight. My driver would pick me up straight to the bank. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. And it was just kind of like, he was like, oh my God, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not going to give up. And at any moment they could have said, you know what? We're sick of you coming over here. We're sick of you calling. They could have said that because it was in their right. They don't yeah. have to loan yeah. to anybody they don't yeah. if they don't want to. Um, I'm sure banks here are making the money that they want, right? But um, it took a lot of WhatsApp messages, a lot of emails, a lot of me pushing, but not pushing, knowing how yeah. not to sound like a a hole and then it's like well how can how can we do it this way how can we remove like the them living there how can oh we got to send it to committee we have to send it to um high risk we have to you know and then banks is like molasses moving yeah. right 
So, um, be it, be before we get into the, the details of that, oh, yeah. I wanted to see, do you mm -hmm. ever have clients that just, just send the money directly to the, the seller's accounts or do you always have it flow through or what's been your experience with that? It's been to our account. Okay. It's been to our account. And I've, then we, and I've then done we send that it. with where I just wire it directly, but it's always mm -hmm. this dance because sometimes it takes, for me, it's taken up to two weeks to clear. And so yeah. it's a decision, okay, when do they actually sign and who's at risk during that time? And yeah. So, they they feel more comfortable sending it to us yeah. and we just hold it and whenever okay. everything needs to be signed has been signed we just do the transfer because it's right there and it's the money's already here i show the seller hey the money's already here so let's finish up whatever needs to get signed okay mm -hmm. so now let's delve into the mortgages because i and, and i'm gonna be up front i'm i'm a little skeptical because i've been in this country for so long and that's always been like the impossible is for foreigners even for locals, but especially for foreigners to get mortgages. Mm -hmm. So, so tell me how, how this works and, and make me a believer in it. <laughs> you know what? I had a lot of people tell me that I was crazy. It's never going to happen. People in the community here, they were just like, good luck with that with like a tone. And I was just kind of like, well, you know, at least if, if all comes down, I just invested money and I know how the banking system works and you know, it's just not going to be a thing. But, um, it took uh, a lot of time asking over and over and over to different people, to different banks, um, sitting at, this, at these branches and sometimes like wanting to walk away and like, forget this, you know, I, I have my business in, in California. Like, why do I even need to do this? Right. But then again, it's like, but I love this country now. You know, I like how it is. So how can I help other people do this without using all their Bitcoin, you know, without paying 50% down because if it's a hundred, $150,000 home or 400, that's half, right? Yeah. But if you can even find somebody willing to Correct. finance half, because Correct. They usually want it now. it's a hundred percent. Yeah. 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 So it took a lot of uh, me not giving up because giving up was just, just the doors right there, you know, and I, I kept looking, I'm like, Oh my God, I have to go to the bathroom. And they're like, well, you can't. And, and uh, yeah, and it's just like over and over over and over and i it and it was like our you know it was just like a mission that i was didn't want to give up and i said it's, it's going to have to happen because how are they going to grow if there's nobody can buy it with mortgages like nobody's going to come out here and say okay well I'll put well i'm sure people can but a lot of people the majority is not going to say oh i'm going to put a hundred thousand dollars down yeah. or pay two hundred fifty thousand i'm like where are they going to have to live off of so um that was the uh, the one thing and then i said well i want to buy a four hundred thousand dollar home at one point or even more so how am i going to do it and that's what it was so it was like going from bank to bank to bank to bank for months on my own dime you know it's like driving out here i mean flying out here accommodations the bitcoin landing spot was still under construction you know we had mold in the water tank it, it was like a mess it was a mess but i was like you know what we're all in i'm all in i yeah. said i'm all in so um are you able to sit in those meetings and not lose your your temper because uh, southerns are very non-confrontational and i've mm -hmm. i had some frustrations where i'm just like yeah and they just look at me like i'm crazy i'm like yeah All right, I, like i remember this is non-confrontational society yeah. here so i did i did <laughs> especially was that when i was like four hours without eating because remember i'm flying in yeah right sometimes i'd have time to eat something and then at 8 30 i needed to be there and um, and then they like, oh, I got to talk to some person. Oh, I got to talk to the other person. Oh, they went busy. They're busy with their they're with another client. And then I'm waiting, right? So um, I did get upset a handful of times because it felt like to me like, and it wasn't like personal. It was just like they don't take me serious. Like they they they're making fun of me. Is like what I felt. Like oh, they just had me sitting here because it was for hours. And I'm like these people don't even know what I'm trying to do. I'm help. Yeah. I'm trying to help, right? And, um, but it's a very old fashioned it is. system. I it mean, is. I, when I finally got my bank account, I had to sign, I mean, the stack yes. of documents like this. And then they came back and they're like, um, you're, we don't like your signature because they were comparing it Varied to, the, it. to mm -hmm. my Passport. residency card, mm -hmm. which was one of those electronic right. things, which you can never sign. Right. And they're like, it doesn't, you need to make your signature look like this. So I had to go back. They printed out the hundred pages again, and I had to 
basically trace that signature mm-hmm. so it matched for them. Right. And I was just like, what? Yeah, so imagine me dealing with that type of non-urgency. Yeah. Day in and day out. And I'd come in for a week at a time, two weeks at a time. And I'm like somebody, and then I'd go to meetings, you know, to the Bitcoin meetings and meetups and all of that. And then I'd ask there, hey, who do you know? You know, and I, they all looked at me like I was an insane person, like I was just smoked out or something. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, so finally, finally, after months, I had. Uh, I was able to meet with the president of one of the banks, you know, of all that back and forth. And um, she, it was like a long table and then she had her people come in. And then it was myself, my admin, and um, a friend of mine and another agent of mine. So it was four of us. And then she had her crew, like the president of the bank, right? And I said, look, I've been in business for this long. I've never gotten in a lawsuit. You can background check me. You can do whatever it is. But I want to do this. I want to do 100% U.S. citizen. Like, how can we do this? And she said, okay, well, how do you want to do it? Like, how, why would we need to do that? And I laid everything out. I'm like, look, the, the country's growing, but there's no opening for anybody that can come and get financing. Like, how can we do this? So I started giving her examples of the type of loans that we have in the U.S., right? So we were mixing, matching their loans and our loans, to where they were comfortable, but they were feasible and they were okay. And it was something that a regular U.S. citizen was used to paying, right? So every time I said, okay, well, what about the co-signer? Because you had to have a co-signer that was a national, you know, a resident, a citizen here. And I'm like, well, how can we figure that out? Because every person that comes, let's say they, they land in the, here in El Salvador, they're not going to know anybody that's going to sign off on a $200,000 yeah. home. Well, especially if, if they're putting themselves at risk Correct. as, as and having to pay that loan. Yeah. And a foreigner that doesn't even live here. Yeah. It doesn't have anything, no connection, right? So that was one thing. Then the next thing was, um, how do we not have to make them a resident? Because of course you have to be some kind of, again, attachment to the country for them to loan you. How do we not make them work here? Like, how can we work with that? And then, okay, we're going to have to send it to committee. We have to send it to high risk. We're going to send it to our legal team. So every point took weeks for an answer. Every point took weeks for an answer. And then um, finally, we got it to where it was an investment loan. And then we didn't do credit check because I said, well, we don't, you don't need to do a credit check. They're going to live here. If Chase isn't going to come out to El Salvador, to another country to come and collect on a credit card. You know, so it doesn't matter. It was, it's irrelevant. I was like, it's irrelevant. The credit check is irrelevant. Like, you don't you don't need that. So they were kind of looking at me like, what? You know, because they do run a credit check here. But when you're new and you get your needs, it's clear. You don't have yeah. anything. Yeah. So, um, again, it was uh, it was I was talking with the manager and I'm like, look, we can run it this way. We, I gave them so many different variations to finally it worked out. But the one thing that they would not remove at all were months was the co-signing that somebody had to co-sign here and give their 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 do we everything had to be given and that person had to co-sign so um for my client it was the one client she gave me one chance she says i'll give you one file right one person that you can the, put through this is the bank US, yeah you're talking about okay the bank said i'll give you a chance to do one just one and I said, that's all I need. I was so happy just to get the one yes, yeah. right? And um, so the client is 100% U.S. citizen. And the one thing that we had an issue was the cosigner. Because again, it's a $200,000 mortgage. And now you have to have this one person that just met him cosign. Yeah. And, um, and when you're cosigning, you're legally obligated. obligated to pay that so you're obligated no matter what right and then you have to have decent credit also so you just can't be just somebody that you're just like hey can you just co-sign like somebody off the street i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't even co-sign for family members because it's Mm -hmm. you never know what's going to happen and they're going to be in a position where they can't pay something unless you have you know the resources you know that it's not going to be a hardship for you that's that's a risky thing to do for somebody so for months that was the problem 
And I'm like, okay, so now we're going to look for a co-signer. And somebody said, oh, I'll co-sign for $5,000. I'll co-sign for $4,000. So we had people that were willing, but they were charging this much. And I'm like, yeah. okay, well, we can't scale this way. This is all bad. We can't scale this way. So um, adopting Bitcoin came in November, right? And I told the manager. Th I'm like, this past November? This past or? November. Okay. Mm -hmm. Adopting Bitcoin came this past November. And... Um, I told the bank, I said, hey, I'm going to go in. Can we talk about this co-signing thing? I'm like, this is the last thing that we, we need to do. How can we move this? How can we move this needle? This is the last thing. And then uh, the manager said, you know what? We were talking about this. All this that's going on, he said. And I'm like, oh, my God, like my heart dropped. Like my heart dropped because he said, you know what? This, I thought he was going to say this is too much. Yeah. We can't do this, right? And he was really, really serious about it, the phone call. And I said, um, okay, you know, like, okay, here it comes, right? And then he's like, you know, we just waived it. I started crying. <laughs> I started crying. I'm like, oh my God. So that was my okay. So they waived it for that one file? For everybody. Or? Okay. For everybody. And then I was able to, on top of that, I was able to offer it to everybody else. Okay. We're going to open it up, he, they said. So explain to me what what you know obviously i'm assuming the the rates can can vary mm -hmm. but give me the the broad strokes of how it, it's structured it's structure. what type of recourse does the bank have mm -hmm. if, if people default how mm -hmm. do how are how are they going to scale this okay so now um the terms and the rates are this so they're 15 years to 25 years the terms the rates are from eight and a eight to Eight, eight and a half and 8.75. Those are the rates. So that's going to depend on the risk of the, of the client. And if it's under a hundred thousand dollars, it's automatically 8.75. So anything under a hundred thousand dollars is 8.75 because they're trying to bring some money in through the interest rate. Um, it's a 20% down payment. And, um, we offer also, the construction loan, which is 100% construction loan. So if you have the land, we will finance 100%. The construction loan itself, it's 15 years. If you buy the land and do the construction at the same time, it's 25 years. So those are, that's kind of like the, the scale. I'm of assuming how. with the, the land and the, the building together, they're, they're going to need that 20% yeah. down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it'll be the total amount of the financing that they're getting. Okay. Yeah, so that's how that is. Um, and and how how are they? How are you qualifying these people? Bank the bank account, um, or for the pre qualification is the passport and two years bank statements. Okay. And then that's how we know how much they're going to qualify for. And do you use you know ratios similar to what they use in in the U.S. or proven for loans? They and use it and they're the ones that punch it in and let me know what it is because they haven't really they're still messing with it. Um, so where it's it's still it's, it's just happened in November. Yeah. So they're still like figuring that out to be able to tell me because I keep asking them like, oh, well, we're working it out because it's new to them. So they're adjusting that we have a team that work with us directly. So they're all trying to figure out why we're even they're even doing it right and then how to do it correctly. So I have a ton of questions. Um, my mind's kind of spinning right now. I'm just having, you know, like I said, been here for so long and seeing yeah. how hard it is to to do these things. So so you're running no credit checks on, on no the No US credit checks, no. No, no US credit no. checks. And so, but you are doing income verification. Your income verification is your taxes. Your taxes. Okay. And then you were going to ask for pay stubs. Once you're pre-qualified, we'll ask for pay stubs just to match up your, your taxes. Okay. So is it going to be similarly more difficult if you're self-employed like it is in the U.S.? Um, well, no. All they want to know, because if you're self-employed, you're still going to do taxes. So we're Yeah, going, yeah. But, yeah. I, but I know, like, I've always had my own business mm -hmm. and... Depending on what where the market mm -hmm. is, sometimes it's not a problem of being self-employed. Other times it's, no, it's almost not. impossible. No, it's not a problem. So I it's didn't know. Um, in the U.S., they much prefer you have a W-2 than to have a, yeah. a, a business. So no, I didn't know for this. Okay. It's the same. So they're going to look at your, your tax returns mm -hmm. and your... Pay stuff. Um, do they care whether these people are buying to, to live here versus vacation homes? Um, 
versus we are right now yeah right now at this time we're just doing single family homes so no commercial okay so they can build and then do vacation homes it doesn't matter what what they're going to end up using it for eventually but the loan is strictly for residential okay so how 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 does this make sense to to the bank because at those rates i mean that's much cheaper than what you'd pay for a hard money loan even in the u.s and they have no re personal recourse against the mm -hmm. people and if they're loaning 80 percent a property value could easily drop mm -hmm. more than 20 percent mm -hmm. very easily so mm -hmm. how what why would the banks want to do this like how would that I, as if if I was going to loan money, I wouldn't loan on those terms. So mm -hmm. that's that's why I'm I'm skeptical. Obviously, mm -hmm. I want to see this happen. I right. think it would be oh, awesome. Oh, it's happening. Yeah, so, we're closing. So how do they? The the numbers just don't make sense to me. So that's what because has it's, me confused. That's why um because that's the reason why we're doing it like a like a hybrid from the U.S. and their own loans. Because I know of Salvadorians that are getting loans at nine percent. What do you mean by a hybrid from the U.S.? So it would be we're trying to do a hybrid. So we're just combining two loans in the one to make our loan here. OK, so, so you bringing... have a loan partner in the U.S. that's that's doing part of the loan. No, and the banks here. it's all here. It's 100 percent Salvadorian, but it's just a model of an investor loan in the U.S. So an investor loan in the U.S., you give 20 percent down. And uh -huh. that's where we came up with that number because they didn't want to do it. Right here, you have to give 10% down. And I said, you know what? What if we give 20? Because that's the normal in the U.S., 20% down for an investment home. Yeah. And they were at, at okay minimum, with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so when you say hybrid, you're not saying it's not two different banks. No, that, it's 100% Salvadorian okay. bank. So they're underwriting that full 80%. Yes. With with very little recourse. That to, That's why they have. So. We do have the one thing that we the one thing that I did not take off was um a power of attorney, you do have to have power of attorney uh -huh. just in case you're out of the country or however, but he doesn't have to be a co-signer before it had to be like a co-signer that's here. Yeah. Yeah. But, but a power of attorney, that's just something I, that can sign the documents yeah. for them and, mm -hmm. and take yeah. care of legal matters. Yeah. So if they're, if, if they, um, you know, default or anything, then the, the power of attorney would be coming into effect. But regardless, I think it's, I think it's a good deal because it's 20%. I mean, out of eight and you don't have to live here. You don't have to work here. I no, mean, no. I think for, yeah. for, the the buyer i mean i i'll i would get a loan to buy something like yeah. that especially with what i think real estate's going to do yeah. here in this country yeah it's just to be honest it just sounds too good to be true I know. that's that's my only uh, that's where my skepticism comes yeah. in um because i i'm, I'm trying to put myself in the in the bank's, bank's shoes position. and 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 I, I could see if it was like the government was incentivizing them to do that but i'm just yeah i'm not Obviously, I that's I, the work I, I did. Yeah. And that's how good it got because it was just back and forth, back and forth. And it had to be good where good enough for people can it, easy enough for they for them to come and invest here. So how long should people expect this process to, to take and how much it could be um, about 60 days, but then it's going to depend on the seller's documents. That's where all that plays in. Because the qualification is pretty easy, the buyer is pretty easy to get qualified and everything get done because they have everything right. It's the property now that has to be also um, qualified. They'll send out an appraiser to make sure everything's good with the property. Um, they're gonna, we're, the attorney is going to check title and all of that, and if anything needs to get adjusted, it needs to get adjusted. So now it goes to the government prop government. Um, offices and they have to adjust things. So the timing and what makes it lengthy are the changes that need to be done to the property. The seller's still gonna wanna sell it, but the documents and all that has to be correct for us yeah. to close. Yeah. So it's it's between eight to nine percent is the rates right now. And then mm -hmm. I'm assuming there's some points on there that that mm -hmm. some fees that they yeah. have to, to so, pay. Yeah. So they'll pay two percent to the ta to the bank. And then we do the origination. So we do two percent and then whatever um, fees and stuff that needs to get done for recording. So so basically the recording fees, they're going to have to pay mm -hmm, regardless. regardless. Mm -hmm. So basically they're going to pay like four points, four percent that yeah. they're paying on yeah, the loan. Yeah, it kind of totals so. up to like five after okay. everything's said and done. That's what so we're looking at. So on a $200,000 loan, they're going to look at like $10,000 in, mm -hmm. in fees yeah. that they would pay. Yeah, that, so what I just is... tell them is like 25% down. 
that's yeah. 25 yeah. percent on top of the 20 which is do five more which is you know i mean that would be on the higher end in the u.s but it wouldn't be out of yeah the ordinary yeah. for as far as points on a mortgage so yeah. um well i i guess my real question is, okay, how, how many, have you actually funded any of these? Yeah. Uh, how many deals is this, mm -hmm. is this, I, I, I'm not disbelieving you be, for anything about you just because I've been here for so long and it I sounds know. too good to be true. Yeah, so. even my attorney was like, you just changed history on this yeah. lending situation here. Um, we have about 14 in the pipeline right now. We closed our first one. Um, back in January and now he's going back in to do his construction loan. Um, we have saved. So he, he did it on a property. He just yeah, bought on the, lot, on the lot. Bare property. Yeah. Okay. And then he just wanted to pay off the seller because he had already given them a big deposit. And then the seller's like, I need the money, you know, to close. Yeah. He had it in other banks and they couldn't close it. So we came in and then we ended up closing it. So now he's doing his uh, architectural things and permits to build. So now we're in the building on the building part of it. Um, we have about four already right now in transaction. So we're just waiting on seller paperwork right now. Okay. So hopefully in a few months we can get you back on and yeah. you can tell us how this is, is yeah. progressing because yeah. I mean, obviously for Bitcoiners and people looking to, to come here, if you can get a mortgage, the, the possibilities are just yeah. so much wider and people come here all the time and they're. You know, you have as an American, you always just assume, well, I need 10, 20 percent down. Yeah. And so they start looking for properties and then you're like, no, you can have to pay for it in yeah. cash. And they're like, wait, what? Yeah. So. And that's the thing in, in, in initially that they were like, you're not going to be able to do that. We've already been into the banks. We already asked in the banks. You have to have residency. You have to have all this. How is the person? Yeah, it was kind of like I was kind of the butt of the joke sometimes, you know, and then the tonality that they took. But it's like, you know what? I've done mortgages. I already know how to try to st structure it and negotiate with the bank. It's yeah. just which bank's going to do it first. That's yeah. all it was. Who's going to come first? Well, and the, the real estate market here is already on fire. So yeah. if if the you know if these mortgages become widespread, obviously yeah. that's just going to accelerate that. Yeah. So um, I think we had one of your listings. Did we show that already, Andy, just to give people a, a sense of mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's available. And, and this is in... San Blas, San Blas area. Yeah. So that's one of them. So this is one of the ones that probably was built, what, like 40, 50 years ago yeah, or something? Yeah, just that, inherited that property. Yeah, which seems to be a lot of times when they sell is they yeah. inherit something. Yeah. The family hasn't used it in, you know, decades or, or oh, this this one looks like they've done some renovations on it. Yeah, the, the just a little bit, looks, but no. Yeah. yeah, the house looks good. The inside needs to get has work to be done then we have more more pictures and stuff on the site okay but um we have uh one that's seller financing um and there i got them to accept 10 percent down okay at three percent interest rate wow i know i'm a pretty good negotiator here <laughs> so how much is this this home here that we're seeing this that property uh 425. okay and that's that's ocean front yeah that's you ocean know front. pretty pretty Big lot. Yeah. Um, and that's in San Blas? San Blas. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know if that was in El Zante, it would probably be over a million. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Especially a big, nice lot like that right on yeah, the Yeah. And then you have more built, more, you can put a plat, see the ocean's all just right above, yeah. ar around there, right o over. You could put a platform and just, I don't know. It's. Just, I think it's really a really good deal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will definitely keep uh, keep following uh, this. I'm I'm always a, a don't trust verify person, yeah. so I might have to uh, put my application in and uh, yeah. get a mortgage started because, I mean, honestly, that's only a few percent more than you would pay in, in the U.S. Yeah, and so and um, to not have to go through the residency, not yeah. have to go through working here. Yeah. I mean, it's um, basically giving money away, really to a foreigner to be able to buy. Yeah. Yeah. It's I, I hope I hope. And then the one hundred percent construction loans. I mean, you have you buy a property for what, whatever thousand and let it sit and then you just come back and build when you're ready. Yeah. You know, I mean and at least you have the property. And do you they want base it. that just on whatever the future value. The the, the builder price that yeah. they come in with their Yeah, their they base it on a or? yeah. Okay. So we'll need uh it's called a paquete tecnico. So we'll have all the permits, it'll have the amounts of what, what's gonna cost, and they do um 
three desembolsos, which is what they're going to pay for the construction. The first one's 40, then, then 30 and 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's, have you found, I, I've found, because we're building a lot of different things, that construction prices have gone up quite oh, yeah. a bit in the last couple of years. Yeah. So uh, Everybody's people, trying to build a new yeah. something. It's, uh, I'm always like shocked. I'm like, man, I think that Wasn't cost that like, us half as much yeah. like three or four years ago. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why I'm just letting that lot sit right now because I have all other other projects that yeah. I'm doing um, and I'm not in a rush to really build, but I did want to make sure I lock up a property. Yeah, no, no, I think that was wise because it's, mm -hmm. uh, especially in El Zante, I mean, it's yeah. very hard to find I anything. I know, I know. I get messages from people all the time. I'm like, I don't think there's really much, you yeah. know, at least I, anything reasonable. Yeah, I think... Um, there's a lot of, of sales that are not being advertised because I have a person that finds good amount of properties and the prices are still okay on most on most of them. They are expensive, but there's always and we are we're always looking. We're yeah. always looking. Yeah. yeah. So we ha yeah, we have uh, we have a good. Um, I've managed to have a good team and um, we're working every single day to make sure we have properties, whether they're beachfront, mountain, or wherever. It's like, we, we'll, we'll go out and find them. Do you guys do any work with any of the, I know there's a lot of like condo towers and different developments mm -hmm. coming in. Do you guys, I don't know how that works, if they just do all their own sales or how that works. Um, right now we're in the middle of locking up a deal of 179 million on uh, development. Okay. So we'll be the the agents of the company that represents them. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So that's what we're working on that. Is that something and on the coast or in the city? It's just up the street. Okay. <laughs> it's just up Good the deal. street. And then there's a couple more that they're giving us to sell. Um, because again, we have the financing. Yeah. No, obviously that's that a crucial, was the, crucial part. Yeah, that was the thing. So I think we've got the, the Bitcoin landing spot. We've got, we put up your, your links, what are you on Twitter? I'm assuming, Twitter, um, mm -hmm. where else can people follow you? I live or? on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's where most of my Bitcoiners are. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I live there. Um, and then we have the website. So we're, we most time, most of the times I, while I'm doing uh walks and stuff, I'll post them on Twitter first and then our admin and we'll put them in the site Okay. with all the details. Awesome. Well, when you get some uh, more of these things funded, we'll have you. We'll have you back on. And, yeah, uh, I always like to see the. I'm gonna tag you. The, funded. The, yes, funded. Yes. Funded. Per perfect. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. I'm. Uh, I'm a born skeptic, so I need that. Uh, well, need that's what should, and it's some. It's not something that was nobody's used to. Yeah. Even people, when I tell them, they're still. It's like you. It's like what? No. And in Salvador, it's like what? Yeah. But it's okay. It's okay. It's good because yeah. I don't want to get flooded right away. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure you will. I'm sure it's. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they're gonna come flowing in. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you uh, making you. The, the drive down to to hang out with us. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll have you back on. Thank you. All right, thanks. <laughs>